So, uh, we have been discussing about the divergent approaches for managing and rehabilitating the heritage properties. And uh, today we will continue with that, what we have been discussing. Uh, if you remember that we discussed the various approaches of indirect uh, conservation, preservation, consolidation, restoration, etc. And of this we have already talked about indirect conservation and preservation, consolidation and restoration. Today we will talk about the adaptively used and we will talk about uh, reconstruction and we will talk about reproduction. Let us take one by one. Uh, first we will talk about rehabilitation and adaptive reuse of historic structures. Uh, the best way to preserve a building is to keep them uh, in use, which may involve mise or valeur. What that means? It is a French word which means an enhancement. A structure which is an historic structure which may have outlived its original purpose. That means it is no longer is used for the purpose for which it was built, but the structure is there. It may uh, require some sort of a preservation, restoration and consolidation, but still it can be used. In that case, the best way is to keep them in use. So, adaptive reuse, that means it has to be adapted to the new use, often is the only way the historic and aesthetic values can be saved. Uh, economically and historic buildings brought up to the contemporary standards. These are a bit tricky issues, but these uh, need to be understood. And uh, so, Bernard Fielden gives this is the definition of the uh, rehabilitation and adaptive reuse that when a building has outlived its original purpose, what it can be used for and how it can be used for. If you remember, initially we have talked about uh, the very structure uh, or the building uh, where uh, IIT system started, the first IIT Kharagpur started in this building. Now, if you remember, we discussed about that, that originally it was uh, designed as a 1917 as a collectorate building, a district collectorate when the district has to be, but it was never used for that purpose. Uh, but later on in 1931, 1942, it was used as the Hitchley detention camp. So, the building was kept in use and it so, sort of a survived. And during the second world war time, it was an air force uh, base. And after the world was over uh, and uh, during after our independence, uh, when there was decided that it a new uh, uh, system of technological education will be there. So, this building uh, along with this a huge site and the uh, surrounding area, uh, we started the first IIT system. So, this is the building where in 1951 IIT Kharagpur started the first IIT in India. After that, over the years, uh, this building also was not enough, there were more space was required, the new building came up and uh, this building, well, the original building, it was not used and now uh, it is used as the science museum where the Shohit Bhavan, because there certain incident happened during uh, when it was a uh, prison and a detention camp and in memory of that it is named as Shahid Bhavan and it is a science museum which is hosting there. So, you see that the use has been changing over the years from a detention camp supposed to be a collectorate, then uh, air force base and then an IIT um, building where the classes and the administration was there and now it is a science building. What, what is the advantage? The advantage is that this beautiful building has survived and it needs some sort of a special care and other but still it is being continued to be used and that is the purpose of what we call the rehabilitating uh, historic structure. Now, uh, the recycling of a building, so we call it a recycling of building. It has long been uh, an important and effect effective way uh, so that the uh, building is not demolished and it has been used as a preservation tool. Uh, in initially developed as a method of protecting historically significant buildings from demolition. And uh, may, there are many, many examples where I mean entirely different uh, type of activities are being uh, used uh, are hosting in this type of structure. A very well known example, uh, there are many as I said, there are many well known example is the um, the which is used as the Tate Modern. It is along the river Thames and opposite St. Paul's Cathedral and uh, there the Tate Modern Gallery is hosted there. And you know what is the original uh, use of this building? It was a bank site 
uh, power station in 1962. Uh, this is a, it was uh, designed or used much earlier, but this is a picture from 1962 uh, when it was still being used as a um, source of energy. Uh, it has gone through several sort of uh, debate and discussion because a lot of uh, pure conservationists, they did not like that uh, this sort of they thought it is an ugly building opposite St. Paul Cathedral along the river Thames uh, and there was a lot of because it was initially a very important landmark for an industrial revolution where formal electricity generating unit was, it was built in as I said 1891. And uh, by late 1930s, the bank site was considered was an inefficient, old, and a polluting source. So a lot of people really wanted to demolish this structure and make this uh, riverside more beautiful than others. Though so this was an example of an industrial heritage in today's context. Uh, so there were proposals because there were uh, two groups of people. One group of people wanted to keep it, preserve it as a landmark of an industrial revolution, industrial heritage. Uh, so, there were a proposal to re redevelop this redundant power station. Uh, some proposal were for the industrial museum, some were for the entertainment uh, hall uh, or a hotel or an opera house, conference and exhibition, but none were physically or uh, not financially, uh, they were not viable because this is a very important thing. The physical structure was there intact, it was quite uh, structurally sound, but it was not uh, financial viability also has to be tested. Uh, so, as I said, there was a group and a strong opinion that the building should be demolished. Uh, it sort of changes the hand. It went to the private owners and at one of point of time, they were removing all the uh, machineries and uh, other things from the structure. At that point, there was some public opinion and uh, 1990, the BBC television program, uh, One Foot in the Past focused on the impending threat to the building that it is uh, going to be demolished. The reporter Gavin Stamp made an uh, impassioned plea for the building to be saved and as a result uh, we see the building uh, still standing today as a landmark of an industrial heritage but for entirely different purpose. What happened in April 94, the Tate Gallery uh, announced that the bank site would be the home for the new Tate model. Now, see what a contest, an uh, 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 area of uh, factory, uh, power generating unit, uh, and which is for some of the artistic endeavor. And what is happening now? The, it's a turbine hall, which is the a huge gallery space where the Tate Modern uh, people come there, and it's a very, and this is some of the inside gallery space. And millions of tourists come to this place, not only this place, it has really created a sort of a landmark uh, around the space and it has, it's, it's able to create a lot of uh, not only financial return, but it has really created a space of activity. And this is what, uh, it is unthinkable, it is a totally contrasting situation, but this is possible. So, the shale or the structure is there, modifications were required, a lot of internal, but still it is a landmark which is completely change is used. And so, this is what is uh, which called rehabilitating a structure or adaptive, uh, adapting an old structure uh, which has outdated its use for uh, some other use. This some other use also need to be seen and tested and examined and a lot of very sensitive way. A very good example in our country which is in Kuchi Binale. Uh, since 2012, this Kuchi Binale has been going on in the Fort Kuchi area. There are a lot of old structures which are there, the residential area, the commercial area, which was very sort of a, uh, not in a very good state. And suddenly there was a foundation, uh, um, a private foundation, which started this Binale. And now uh, it becomes a really an activity area and it has been able to regenerate economy of that area, but keeping the structure is an entirely new residential area is totally changed to an art center, activity center, tourist center, recreational center, but still it has got some of the people who are staying in that area and it also creates a generous economy for that area because when the tourists come, the artists come, 
uh, the interest is interest had created and it also the homestays hotels and the cafes and restaurants galleries uh, artist activity there so it's an entirely new environment uh, which happens there and it has been able to uh, create or uh, sort of a, a new environment not only but it has been able to keep the original structure the fabric and other uh, so that's uh, and all over the world uh, these um, the creating the or converting or rehabilitating the old areas the go downs and other areas into the artistic endeavor is very very popular and um, in, in Berlin it has been there many many other places uh, these uh, type of uh, spaces has been uh, old structures have been reused or rehabilitated as the artistic quarter the many many other uses are also possible uh, so finally what is really adaptive reuse uh, adaptive reuse is the act of finding a new use for a building and that is very important that what could be the new use of the building which is should be the sensitive to the original historical use for example uh, I suppose uh, the uh, structure has an associational value and where the interior of the structure the interior layout is also very important in such cases probably we can't uh, keep that for adaptive reuse at least not totally if there are some of the places which have a sort of a memory or association we have to keep that so one has to see that first what is the value and significance and in that context one has to find the new use sometimes it can be for a singular structure sometimes it can be a group of structure sometimes it can be the part of an entire city uh, like the Fort Kochi area uh, so it is often described as a process by which structurally sound older buildings are developed for economically viable new uses economically viable but one must remember it shouldn't be um, and the profit um, uh, is important but that is not the sole criteria in deciding that what can be the new use of these buildings this is how sir bernard Friedland talks about adaptive use let's see what bada charter the Australian e-commerce char charter what it talks about the adaptive uh, reuse or rehabilitation it says the adaptation means changing a place to suit the existing use or the proposed use so this is one and compatible use this compatibility is very important which means the use which respects the cultural significance of a place such a use involves no or minimum impact on the cultural significance. So, this is very important that we have to understand what is the impact of the new use. For example, we have seen in uh, even in I am talking about Kerala also which is a popular tourist destination, many of the old structures are being bought by the resource and they are put to as a resource or the luxurious uh, staying places. But uh, the people who are local people they are complaining because they say that which was supposed to be the uh, alter of that house they are now being converted into toilet or something else and that is not uh, even if they are not used as the residential purpose this it also contradicts the sensitivity of those uh, uses so one has to be very very sensitive so that there is no minimum impact not only in terms of use but also it should not happen that by converting into some other use it should not um, uh, intervene too much into the structure that is very important to understand adaptation is acceptable only when where the adaptation has minimal impact on the cultural significance of the places so one has to understand before one decide what is the proper use or the compatible use that which type of use really sort of uses or utilizes or explores the potential of the structure that is very important and so that it has a very minimal impact on the significance for which it is uh, we are valuing that structure so this is uh, what is important as i say there are the many places all over the world which has really uh, this is pandicherry there are a lot of heritage hotels you can see that these hotels are people come there uh, to a, a sort of a appreciate or enjoy these charms of the old days uh, aged uh, days charm of this particular type of environment courtiers the verandas and the balconies of that and so they are really are uh, making the place quite outstanding popular and uh, very unique in a way 
Now, when we talk about Pondicherry, we must understand that Pondicherry is a was a French colony over the years for a long time. It was a, so it has a very unique townscape value, and uh, it's not we are not talking about one single structure or one sort of a very very uh, monument type of structure. We are talking about normal houses and which make up the cityscape, the townscapes, and other, and then adapting that to the new uses, which is sort of. Uh, is profitable definitely, but viable and also it is also sort of uh, compatible with the old residential structure. And while talking about Pondicherry, uh, there I am quoting that this designed by the Dutch, coveted by the English, built by the French and um, uh, engaged in trading with Rome, in this coastal town glimpses of Mediterranean Europe linger. And this is what is the uh, unique value of this place. The French connection is strongest because it was a French colony and which collides with the Indian sensibilities to create a concoction that is uniquely Pondicherry. And that is the what is the value that is the sort of a, oh, um, a sort of a USP of Pondicherry that is why the tourists come. And while we are talking about Pondicherry we must uh, remember that it is not only the French Pondicherry, there is a Tamil quarter, there are also structures where people are staying, uh, there are traditional quarters or people have sort of left that. So, there is a Tamil quarter with an entirely different architectural style, architectural system and there is also a French quarter. It is also the uh, ashram which is there, um, Rishi Aurobindo's ashram, mother was there. So, a lot of these uh, spiritual uh, activities go on all over. So, we must understand these sensitivities and keeping the sensitivities, keeping the values of the local community, keeping the sort of uh, understanding that uh, how uh, sort of it should not interfere with the daily life of the local people, uh, these things are there and it can turn out to be a very, very unique experience and this is what we call the adaptive reuse of a structure or a part of a city or a group of structures. Uh, the next one is the reproduction. Uh, so, what does the reproduction as an approach mean? Reproduction entails copying an extant artifact often in order to replace some of the missing or the decayed parts, generally decorative to maintain the aesthetic harmony. So, this is how Sir Bernard defines that about the reproduction. Now, uh, why and when this reproduction happens? If valuable cultural property is being damaged irretrievably or is threatened by its environment, that means it cannot be sort of a brought back or uh, cannot be repaired to the original condition, it may have to be moved to a more suitable environment. Sometimes we say that it has to be kept to the site or sometimes it has, can, has to be moved to a different suitable environment and a reproduction substituted in order to maintain the unity of the site or building. If you remember, we have discussed about the blast furnace in the Iron Gorge Museum. We have talked about Shantiniket that you said that they have been kept in the on the sites, but there are situations where it has to be uh, sort of uh, taken to a more uh, um, uh, safe uh, environment to preserve it and then probably it has to be replaced with something, a substitution. I'm, uh, for example, I am talking about this is uh, Shalavhanjika, which is a very important uh, part of the Indian um, uh, heritage structures that this is a lady with a tree, they are important and I, will, I mean uh, they are in very of the things. So, you can see uh, on, the, on the bottom there is a uh, Shalavhanjika, which is actually from Bharut and which is now kept in the Indian Museum. So, you have been taken there, it is not in the site. But when the, the, the uh, upper one we can see the Shachi Stup, the eastern terrain of Shachi Stup, the Shalavanjika is still there which has been kept there. So, when it is not possible to keep on the site, we may shift that and we may or may not substitute by a reproduction and sometimes we can keep it, both are possible. And sometimes we can keep it as a whole, sometimes uh, we sort of uh, reproduce a part of the structure. So, the scale may vary. Uh, Let us see an example as we see that uh, the same thing with some other example we have talked about Shantiniketan if you remember Ramkinkar Beach uh, these things I have talked about that that how 
uh, the they have just created some structures to preserve it from the environmental condition and the structures are kept on the site. Uh, but in such cases, there would have been two possible uh, approaches. One is to uh, keep a substitute on the site through reproduction and take the original back to a more sort of a safe environment. Uh, in this case, uh, the Vishubharati authority, what they have done is that they have kept the original uh, on the site in situ and given such sort of a protection. Uh, which may not be aesthetically very pleasing, but at least the original structure is still there. But in addition, what they have done, they have reproduced the structure and that is why I am saying the they have reproduced the structure in fiberglass, the Shantel family in Shantiniketan, few of them have been reproduced, but they are kept somewhere else. They could have been kept on the site and the site. So, the, there are various approaches, but as you can see that it is an exact reproduction which has been done in fiber class which can be kept outside without any shelter and other and it can sort of a complete the thing. In this case of course, Vishwabharati authority they have kept that reproduction in some other site, uh, some other location and clearly mentioning that it is a reproduction in fiber class from the original structure. So, this is what reproduction entails. Uh, Reconstruction, the finally we are coming to the uh, final uh, sort of an intervention measure which is the reconstruction and there is a subtle difference between reconstruction and reproduction. Let us see what reconstruction means. Reconstruction of historic building and historic centers using new materials may be necessitated by disasters such as fire, earthquake, war, war or terrorist activities, you know the Vamiyan Buddha which has been sort of a destroyed, there are many, many examples. So, in such cases, the construction may be desirable, it can be a fire, it can be the earthquake and other things. Now, there is certain uh, sort of a, uh, principles when we talk about the reconstruction. So, it must be based on the accurate documentation and evidence, never upon conjecture. Nobody can say, okay, it could have been like this and other. So, there must be authentic documentation to say, okay, it was exactly like that. So, people are reconstructing it. Now, we can have seen cases that where uh, reconstruction is being done uh, or they are kept as it is. So, they are the different approaches who decides how it, the decision is taken, there are the various criteria for doing that. But when the reconstruction is done, it has to be done on the actual uh, sort of a documentation archival. If you remember, we have discussed about Warsaw that how the reconstruction, the entire uh, old city core of uh, Warsaw has been reconstructed. We have discussed that it depends on the value and the significance and it is a wall it is size, not because uh, it, uh, um, uh, the what it is, uh, it is also because of the, it signifies or represents the, the spirit of the people that who have decided to reconstruct uh, this. So, Warsaw is a very uh, well known an example of that where the reconstruction has been done according to the actual archival document that would the original and it is used for some other purpose. In some cases, reconstruction may also be appropriate as a part of a use or practice that retains the cultural significance of place. Sometimes uh, we have already discussed Japan, which is their tradition that every 20 years some of the shrines are reconstructed uh, or rebuilt. Uh, but there are situations where because of the uh, requirement, a particular requirement, uh, they need to be reconstructed. Now, a very good example, well known example is the Shumnak temple in Gujarat. It has been destroyed over the history many, many times and now reconstructed in Chalukya style of Hindu temple of, uh, in 1951. And um, it, uh, there are sort of a lot of controversy around this that what was actually there and all. But anyway, there is a decision because of its uh, spiritual significance or religious significance, it is uh, considered as one of the holy places. So, um, there was a decision to reconstruct it according to some of the architectural style which um, there probably some research was there to say that how it will be built. So, for such purposes reconstruction can be done. Uh, 
as I said that there is should be sufficient evidence to reproduce to the earlier state. Now, what is that earlier state? Which part of the earlier state? That needs a sort of a historical, archival, archaeological research. And uh, now one such example we can found that as you know that uh, the, in Kathmandu there is an earthquake and a lot of structures, um, normal structures, historical structure, religious structures have been demolished. So, as we can see that there the reconstruction work at Burdunath stupa damage which was damaged in 2015 earthquake it has been reconstructed because oh, entire drawing original documentations are there and it sort of represents and it has a value to the people so it has been reconstructed. So there are the various situation where reconstruction can be done. A reconstruction can be done for a part of a structure and a part of a building or sometimes for the entire structure this reconstruction is possible. Now, uh, the ethics says or the principle says the deconstruction should be identifiable on close inspection or through additional interpretation. That means, if it is done, reconstruction is done only for a part of a structure or as part of a sculpture or thing, that it should be identifiable very clearly at least when seen in close contact. So, in this case, uh, we are again bringing back the Patra temple which is in Midnampur as we can see that there the columns were not there. The column has to be reconstructed because it was a load bearing. Uh, it it had, was taking the entire load if the columns were not reconstructed uh, they are the structural elements they had to be there and how that will be rebuilt. So, you can see that it has been rebuilt uh, totally and uh, so that the structure has been saved. Uh, now, while uh, doing this reconstruction according to the original profile and other things, uh, there are also a crucial issue uh, or a decision uh, which had to be taken that what will be the decoration of this, the bricks were built uh, according to the specification, there were some sort of a decoration as you can see that, that from far you cannot make out because the original divisions and the profile are kept, but when you see in close uh, sort of a uh, from close quarter, you can clearly see that which part is reconstructed and which is the original. This is very, very important uh, because we are talking about the historical structure and the authenticity and interpretation is very important that people should understand that it is uh, original and this is a reconstructed part. So, that uh, sort of a um, clear message should be uh, told to the viewers. Uh, I will again bringing back because we are talking about the decoration when uh, we should go for reconstruction. Uh, again I am coming back to Shalabhanjika of Shachita and you see that in this case uh, this uh, structure is uh, quite intact, uh, it is a beautiful structure, this is a part of the Theranas, but in some of these uh, sculpture uh, partly they were damaged. So, what happened that when they were partly damaged, uh, what the ASI did is that they sort of a uh, constructed uh, or reconstructed uh, part of the limb and you can see that very close uh, thing that uh, it is quite distinguishable that this has been a new addition. Now, the question comes where in Patra we are told saying that, that the um, column has been reconstructed it was uh, uh, necessary, but in this case I doubt uh, whether it was necessary because it was not load bearing. There was nothing uh, sort of a, uh, it could have been kept without that uh, structure because as you can see that in some other part uh, that broken part is there because it was not carrying any load. So, it was really not necessary to reconstruct this part. So, in such cases reconstruction which is really a very extreme step even for that part is not desirable. It could have been kept just like that it would have been more authentic rather than making it out of fiberglass and keeping uh, it like that. So, there are different sort of a situation one has to see case by case and see that whether it is really necessary or whether it can be avoided. Um, and whereas in Patra it was really necessary, uh, in Shachistuk Tarana it was really not necessary to make that. There are more sort of a challenging uh, cases of reconstruction and one of the very, very well known example is that the um, which will Abu Simbel temple. The moving of the entire building to new site is another form of reconstruction justified only by overriding national interest. And uh, as you can see that Abu Simbel temple uh, in Egypt 
uh, they, it was really getting flooded up because the Aswan dump was built and Aswan dump was necessary for to change the um, dropped condition of the uh, that country and it will change the economy. So, and because of that it was uh, uh, sort of threatened. And then uh, there was a decision and the people from all over the country, many, many nations came and extended help and cooperation to really shift the entire temple to a higher land and how it was done, not only one structure, it was not only the temple of Ramesses, there were many, many other structures and it is a really uh, very, very uh, interesting, challenging case that how it has been done. Uh, and uh, you can see that they are rebuilding the structure and they are shifting it. Uh, you can see that I, I, I request all of you to see that because BBC has made four parts movie on this uh, moving temple of the Ramesses and uh, it is very interesting you will understand what that reconstruction means when you are to shifting the entire structure to some other side. Again that decision is very crucial that when do you take this decision. Uh, so, we have discussed. Uh, the various approaches of uh, conservation. We have talked about indirect conservation, we have talked about preservation, we have talked about consolidation, we have talked about restoration, we have talked about adaptive use, reproduction and reconstruction. These are all various approaches of conservation and under the broad umbrella of conservation. And there is no sort of a specific rule that which approach is the correct one. This is uh, very much related with understanding the significance of the value and the which approach should be taken. And in the same structure, various approaches can be adopted like Patra temple, we have seen reconstruction, preservation, consolidation. So, um, these are the things which has to be tested. There, as I say that there is no universal answer, one has to go case by case and see that what approach is the best uh, and for the significance or the value which is there. So, uh, this brings us to the conclusion of this part of this that uh, what are the different degrees of intervention and what are the various approaches for the conservation.